Hey everybody, Dave really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki, Demon of the Fleeting Blossom. We are pursuing my beloved Sanosuke Harada. He is a real sweetheart. Well, it's not like there's been any actual events between anybody. We're just uh, going through this main story. Making little choices along the way that make a little tiny bits of impact as to who we're going to end up with at the ends of these things. Well, anyway, uh, picking up from the last video... We went to join the fight at this gate, but when we got there, it was already over. So you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. It appears the Choshu attacked Hamaguri at the early morning, but were repelled by the combined forces of the Aizu and Satsuma. The forces standing against them have been too much for the Choshu, and they've been forced into retreat. I saw the corner of Hijikata's mouth curl up into a grin. So, Satsuma is helping Aizu now, are they? Times sure are changing. Right. The Satsuma and Aizu domains hadn't been on the best of terms. In fact, the Satsuma were largely nationalistic, much like the Choshu. Unlike the Choshu, however, they'd gone to war with a foreign force at one point and suffered devastating losses. Father had told me that Satsuma had begun to reconsider their nationalistic stance. There are still some of the Choshu bastards fighting over at Kuga Gate. Hijikata's expression changed as he considered Harada's words, but before he could open his mouth to speak, Yamazaki appeared. Commander, we believe the men who led the raid are headed for Mount Tenno. Although Kondo was normally the head of the Shinsengumi, I learned from the men that everyone, including Kondo himself, generally deferred to Hijikata on most decisions. This was no exception, and I could see that all eyes were on him. It kind of seems that way in history, too. I mean, maybe not. I, I still need to study it up a little again. I, it's been a while since I've read up my, on my history, but in, like, every adaption I have seen fictionally, Hijikata's the big man in charge. He was silent for a few moments, and then I saw his mouth curve into a small smile. Well, looks like we've got our work cut out for us, boys. A ripple of dry laughter ran through the men, and I could feel their excitement in the air. Sanosuke, take your men to Kuge Gate to deal with those Choshu bastards. Sure thing, boss. Does that mean I'm going? Saito, Yamazaki, I want you to figure out what the situation is here. I want you to hold Hamagori Gate. As you wish. Your job's a tough one, Chief. I want you to go talk to the Aizu bigwigs. Kondo tilted his head to the side quizzically. Some of those bastards are headed for Tenno, but some of them are just going to run around and cause trouble. If we're going to go after them, then we need to save Kyoto, and you're the one who can get us those papers. Of course. The Choshu were on the run now, but they could still do some damage as they fled. Pursuing them would take us outside of Kyoto, but the Shinsengumi's jurisdiction didn't extend that far. If we wanted to go after them, we'd need to get permission from the military commander, and that meant the Aizu. I see. If the chief of the Shinsengumi goes to speak with them, then the military commissioner's office will have to listen to what we have to say. After what we'd gone through the day before, I didn't imagine Kondo's task would be an easy one. Still, if anyone other than Kondo went, not only would the Aizu be unlikely to grant their request, there was a good chance that the Shinsengumi representative wouldn't even be heard. Gen, I want you to go with him. Somebody has to keep an eye on our chief. Make sure he doesn't go crazy, all right? Uh, Kondo go crazy? Are you nuts? Of course. I'll do my best, Commander. Another laugh ran through the soldiers, and Kondo's mouth twisted into a wry sort of grin. Perhaps he chose not to deny it, because he knew he might go a little crazy. What? How? I've never seen him go crazy. The rest of you are coming with me to Tenno. As for you... Me? He looked directly at me. I wasn't a warrior, and I didn't have any political skill or connections either. Hijikata didn't know what to do with me. I want to follow Harada. Suddenly, I felt very much like dead weight. You can't go with Kondo, but other than that, it's up to you. Oh, alright. It hadn't occurred to me until that moment, but he was right. Kondo was going to meet with the leaders of the Aizu. If I went with him without wearing the Shinsengumi blues, then it'd be a difficult thing to explain. Um, Hijikata would be pursuing the leaders of the Choshu attack toward the Tenno Mountain. Saito would be staying at Hamagurta Gate to protect it and gather information. 
Harada and his men would be going to Kuga Gate to stop the attack on the Imperial Estate. Well, that's where I'm going, right? The question was, where would I go? And that would be to Kuga Gate. Was I saying Kuga? I meant Kuge, sorry. I decided to accompany Harada to the Kuge Gate. When we arrived, it was immediately clear that the fight had not been so decisive as the one at Hamaguri. The Judiciary Commissioner's men, who had moved to Kuge from Hamaguri, were still engaged with a number of Choshu soldiers who had refused to yield. You should probably stay here. Chizuru, it's going to be pretty dangerous out there. Before I could even respond, he was off, the rest of the Shinsengumi thundering into the battle behind him. If you want to get to the Imperial State, you're going to have to go through us first. Look at that. Look at that battle stance. Even in the middle of the battle, the little twist of grin at the corner of Harada's mouth never wavered. Damn it, is that the Shinsengumi? Damn it is right. If any of you are looking for a quick, glorious death, then come at me. Bastard! War cries rose up from both sides, and battle was joined. This time, however, the force defending the Imperial State had the Shinsengumi on their side. The battle did not last long. Is this the best we can do? A great moan of pain went up from the soldiers of the Choshu. Don't let them escape! After them! The officers of the Judiciary Commissioner shouted to their men, who slowly began to advance. They had scarcely begun to move, however, when the man covering the Choshu escape turned and faced them. <gasps> I know who this is. Oh, I hope you feel honored, boys. It looks like I'm going to be playing with you for a bit. A gun, no fair! There was a flash of silver, and a sound like the crack of thunder filled the air. W what was that? Have, have I never seen a gun before? The officer who had just given the order to pursue let out an agonizing scream and collapsed to the ground. He lay there, quite still, and a pool of blood slowly began to form beneath him. That was when I realized what the flesh of silver had been, the weapon called the pistol. I'd never seen one before, but I'd heard of them. They were cylinders of metal that used explosive power to fire small metal balls. Pistols were small, one-handed versions of this type of weapon, which was known as a gun. As we stood there, I realized that it had likely been this gun that had scarred Hamaguri Gate. What's that? Did the sound of my pistol scare you? He looked pointedly at the remaining officials, his mouth drawn open in a toothy grin. I didn't think it was his pistol that kept them at a distance, however, it was the man himself. He was clearly outnumbered, but looked no more concerned than if he were facing no enemies at all. It was clear to everyone present that he was no normal man. Well, it sure is nice of you to play with us, but don't you think it's a little unfair if you're the only one with a gun? Harada? Harada moved a few steps closer to the stranger. Really? Nah, seems fair to me. Besides, you've got that big old pig sticker yourself. Both men grinned a challenge to one another. I think these two are their arch enemies. Almost too late to see, the point of Harada's spear swept through the air toward the stranger. Who leaned out of the way at the last moment. Aw, how disappointing. Well, you seem to be spoiling for a fight. Seriously though, who charges a man holding a gun? Harada, apparently. Using a toy to try and keep others at a distance is pathetic for a warrior and for a man. Wouldn't you agree? The stranger grinned. Oh, kill Shiranui. Or oh, Mr. Shiranui, you. You may introduce yourself as well. I'm Senosuke Harada, the captain of the Shinsengumi's 10th Division. They seemed to see one another not so much as enemies, but more as opponents. The air between them was tense, but I felt no evil intent from either of them. It's like they're playing. <laughs> but what should I do? <laughs> get rid of Ch get rid of Shironoi, really? You think I could do that? Let's see. I will... What? Really? I have to get rid of Shironoi? How am I supposed to do that exactly? Oh, here we go. Uh, um... Jizuru, what are you... If I was honest with myself, I was terrified. This strange man was very dangerous, but Harada had seen something in him, so perhaps he would hear me out. I didn't let Harada finish. 
Mr. Shiranoi, right? Could you... leave now? Seriously? You gotta be kidding me! This is my best strategy! Huh? What the hell, kid? If you're trying to screw with me, I'll end you right here. I felt a cold bead of sweat roll down my spine. This, I thought, must be how a frog feels when it catches the eye of a snake. But I'd opened my mouth. There was no going back now. Uh, um, well, all of the Choshu soldiers have run away. Although he hadn't said anything, he'd clearly been serving as a sort of rear guard for the Choshu during their retreat. Now that they were gone... If they're gone, do you still have a reason to fight? For fun? His eyebrows went up. And he looked at me more closely, with surprise, and something else. He recognizes me, doesn't he? Uh, our job is to protect the Imperial Gate. If you still insist on d drawing your gun, then, um... He let out an exasperated sigh and... Uh, put his gun back in his holster. You've got balls, kid. I'll give you that. Oh, I'm feeling good about meeting new people today. Don't let this go to your head, though. Next time, I won't be so easy on you, or on Harada here. As casually as he could, Harada had moved to place himself in between me and Shironoi. Fine by me. I've already got plenty of friends, but I could use a good enemy. Let's just save the fun for later, shall we? Maybe this time, but I'm not like the kind of guy who likes to enjoy the anticipation, if you know what I mean. With a raucous laughter, he was gone. Harada headed off in the direction Shironoi had gone for a few hundred feet, then returned once he was sure the man had actually left. <sighs> I'd finally allowed myself to begin to relax when Harada gave me a short tap on the head. Be more careful. Okay. He hadn't said much, but even those few words had been enough to let me know he'd been worried about me. Thank you... Sorry for... um... Harada looked at me for a moment before he spoke. Yeah. No, I think you did the right thing. After all, none of our guys got hurt, right? Oh, I saw those blossoms fall. And they bloomed, too. Besides, the commander's orders were to fight off the Choshu if they showed up. It's not our job to track them down. Right. He looked... sad. If they run now... They'll only feel worse. What? But even as I asked, I realized what he meant. The men who'd fled had come all the way from Choshu just for this battle. Now they'd lost. How could they return home in disgrace? Their choice to run meant they had nowhere to return to now. Oh, I've got the feeling we haven't seen the last of the Shironoi guy. I didn't say it, but I felt the same. I hope we don't. Harada was one of the captains of the Shinsengumi, so long as Shironoi was allied with the Choshu, there was no doubt they would meet his enemies. He did manage to dodge my spear. I guess he'll be a challenging opponent. Still, my job's to fight the enemies. And that's what I do. Harada. There was no mistaking the resolve in his voice. I was sure that the man called Shironoi would no doubt prove a dangerous foe, but... There was something in the small Harada gave me then that made me feel at ease. With the battle at Kuga Gate finally at an end, the men who remained began to clean up. I helped as best I could, moving rubble and tending to the wounded, glad that the battle was finally over. The Choshu extremists attempted an attack on the Imperial Estate eventually came to be known as the Hamaguri Rebellion. Although the Shinsengumi were called to action, their efforts were stymied, and they found little in the way of glory. Communication with their superiors had been poor at best, and they spent much of the battle waiting for the reserves. When the Shinsengumi did finally enter the battle, they found several strange opponents awaiting them. Aha! Chikage Kazuma, the man who had defeated Okita at Ikeda, claimed to be from the Satsuma domain during his encounter with Hijikata. Kyuju Amagiri, the man who had shattered Heiski's head guard at Ikeda, also claimed a membership in the Satsuma. They had also met Kyo Shironoi, who fought alongside men from Choshu. Whoever they were, it was clear they were not allies of the Shinsengumi. Indeed, it seemed they could easily become some of the greatest enemies. 
If they were to meet in open battle, the casualties would be severe. By the time the battle was over, the commanders of the Choshu attack had been killed in the fighting or taken their own lives. There were some soldiers, however, who escaped, setting Kyoto ablaze as they fled. By some terrible misfortune, the wind that day blew from the north and fanned the flames, reducing the southern end of the imperial state to ash. As a result of the Choshu attack, many imperial nationalists were executed. After everything had been sorted out, the Shinsengumi were at least given permission to patrol outside of Kyoto from Osaka to Hyogo. No sooner had they been given permission than they set to work, rounding up unruly ronin and defending the public good. With the Hamagori rebellion over, the Choshu were branded as traitors for attacking the estate. From then on, they were acknowledged enemies of the court. Well, that's a bonus at least. A few factions moved around. Alright, chapter two. Ooh. This was my pretty enemy there. February 1865. Things are zooming right along here time-wise, and no sign of my father, I'm guessing. After breakfast one day, I found myself on my way to the common room with a tray bearing tea. Tea again? Tea's ready! I made my way around the room, pouring a cup of tea for each person there, making sure not to spill any. It was a routine I'd begun to feel accustomed to. I'm the tea girl now. Oh, oh thank you, Yukimura. He gave me a warm smile as I handed him his tea. There is nothing quite so delicious as hot tea on a cold day. Thank you! I felt a flush of pride at his words, even though I knew quite well that serving tea was hardly anything impressive. Just the same, I felt as if I was helping out in a way, and that was a nice feeling. Something, at least. It had been a year since I'd first come to Kyoto in search of my father. Living with the Shinsengumi wasn't easy, but they helped me look for him. How? Even after a year of searching, however, I hadn't found anything. Sometimes I felt like it was hopeless, like I'd never find him, and that I should just give up. But the men of the Shinsengumi never gave up. They were always there to cheer me on and keep me going. In a way, I suppose I'd grown to love living with them. Well, I kind of wish we had some more individual interaction here then, because it really doesn't feel like all those things they said. And I'd even been able to repay them some for some of their kindness by helping treat the wounded at the Battle of Ikeda and during the Hamaguri Rebellion. Little by little, I started to feel like I was accepted, as if perhaps I was beginning to fit in. As strange as it might sound, I was beginning to feel as if I had found a place with the Shinsengumi. Then Hijikata spoke, and his words brought me back to the present. Don't kick me out! The Yagi have been good to us so far, but this place is getting crowded. True, it's getting a little small, especially with all the new guys coming in. You're going to be getting even more soon, right? Heisuke was currently in Edo, recruiting more men from the Shinsengumi's ranks. For the Shinsengumi's ranks. It was always good to have more soldiers, but they were beginning to run out of space at the compound. The rank-and-file soldiers were being packed into smaller and smaller rooms. If we could move to a bigger place, that'd be great. The guys were starting to get a little grumpy about being packed together in those rooms every night. I couldn't exactly offer to share it, but I was starting to feel guilty for having a room of my own. Easy for us to say, but it's gonna be hard to find someone else who's willing to let us stay at their place. You have something in mind? Hijikata's smile was almost predatory. The Nishihonwaji Temple. <laughs> well, they aren't going to like that very much. You're thinking we'll just force our way in? Guess I wouldn't expect anything less from you, Hijikata. Um... I didn't leave the compound much, except to go on patrol with the men, so I still didn't know Kyoto very well, and I had no idea what sort of place Nishihonwanji Temple was. It is pretty big, I'll give you that. But, I really don't think the monks are going to take a bunch of soldiers living in their temple. Still, the location's great. We'll be able to go out into the city a lot quicker than from here in Mibu. At the time, the Shinsengumi's headquarters was in the Mibu area, which was on the outskirts of Kyoto. Harada was right in that the current location made it difficult for the Shinsengumi to reach some parts of Kyoto quickly, which reduced their effectiveness. Still, would they really not want us there? Saito only shrugged. The Nishihongwanji Temple has cooperated with the Choshu, 
Some of the ronin have stayed there. Oh. If they supported the Choshu, then that would make the Shinsengumi their enemy. Little wonder, then, that they would hardly welcome us with open arms. <sighs> that meant a whole other level of difficulty. Asking for a place to stay was hard enough, but asking that from an enemy? I fell silent, and Saito continued as if I'd never spoken. No doubt they will be less than receptive to our overtures. On the other hand, if we should move into Nishihononji Temple, the Choshu will have one less place to hide their agents. Oh! Of course! Not only was the location desirable, but taking the temple would make the enemy's movements more difficult. Whatever problems we had acquiring the temple would likely be worth it. You don't think it's somewhat uncouth to use force against men of the cloth? There was no hiding his distaste for the idea. Hijikata's voice was level, but firm as steel. The Choshu have used the temple to hide their men, and they couldn't have done that without the help of the monks. I agree that the Choshu must be dealt with, but this seems... His voice trailed off. Although he was still clearly upset, there was little more he could say or do. I agree with Toshi, but I have to concede that San has a point. He nodded solemnly, apparently deep in thought. Who is this new guy? Yeah, impressive as always, Chief Kondo. Only a man with a truly open mind can be so considerate of both his enemies and his allies. Oh, well, it's very kind of you to say, but I fear my behavior is simply imprudent, not open-minded. He blushed and coughed in an attempt at nonchalance as Hijikata and Okita scowled in silence at the exchange. What's the deal with that? The man who had just spoken was Kashitaro Ito, the new deputy commander. He had joined the Shinsengumi only recently. Kondo had left Heiski and Edo and returned early with Ito and some of his men who had come to join the Shinsengumi. So they don't trust him. He was reputedly a master of the Hokushin Ito sword style and ran a school of his own. When Ito was introduced to the captains, none of them seemed particularly pleased with his addition to their ranks. No sooner had Ito and Kondo left the room than they began to talk amongst themselves. I've heard Ito is an imperial nationalist. Why would someone such as him join the Shinsengumi? He's like the Choshu then? Huh. You really think someone like that can get along with us? Hijikata grunted and pursed his lips for a moment. Kondo is a national loyalist. They might not agree on the Shogun and the Emperor, but they're both nationalists, through and through. They might disagree about who should run the country, but neither of them wanted a foreign nation exerting its control over the country. Besides, Kondo is a loyalist. Without a doubt, he has a few imperialist tendencies of his own. Perhaps the different factions weren't quite so staunchy, divided as they might appear. Would Kondo and the Shinsengumi work for a future where the shogunate controlled the country, but the emperor was still treated with respect? That seemed like a solution that could make everyone happy. If that was the case, then Kondo's version of national loyalism was a wonderful thing. I figured the only one of us who would be very happy about Ito showing up would be Sanin, right? Ma. True, they do both practice Ito, right? He knows Ito too, doesn't he? And Sanin is a bit of a loyalist. I wouldn't have guessed that Sanin and Ito had so much in common. His expression didn't suggest that he was particularly happy, though. Yes, I have met Ito, and he is well-educated and a skilled orator. With such a gifted deputy commander, I suppose that the Shinsengumi has little need for a colonel. Hmm... Sanin's words hung in the air, heavy and awkward. Poor Sanin, he feels totally useless. I didn't understand the ranks of the Shinsengumi, but as far as I could tell, a deputy commander outranked the colonel. With Ito here, there is very little left for me to do. I hadn't even thought of it that way. Sanin felt that Ito was a threat to his own position. An awkward silence fell across the room. So? I don't like him. Okito was the first to speak. Yeah, I know what you mean. There's something about the way he looks at you. Exactly. I don't know how to put it. Like he's sort of... uppity, you know? Like he's looking down on you or something. There was a good deal of nodding and agreement among the three of them for a few moments while I sat in thought. 
Truth be told, I didn't feel particularly comfortable around the deputy commander Ito either. It wasn't that he was a bad person per se, only that he was... how to say it? Off-putting. And we only just met him for like, two minutes. Ito's thin smile had spread across his face when Sanen voiced his objection to Hijikata's plan and how he turned and spoke. You always think of all the possibilities, Sanen. I'm impressed. But I fear you may be overthinking things. It could be a problem, yes, but... His tone was deferential, but it didn't quite match his words. I told you think a slightly larger problem could be that your left arm is utterly useless. Ugh. Yeah, kick him while he's down. Whatever warmth had remained in the room was abruptly gone. Of course, you needn't be useless, even if you can no longer serve as a soldier. I'm sure that your wit and foresight will continue to be a great asset to the Shinsengumi and myself. It was as if Ito had taken a knife and driven it straight into Sanen's heart. I saw his shoulders sag, almost as if he had been punched in the stomach, and all around the room jaws were set and knuckles turned white. What a jerk! Perhaps I didn't hear you right, Ito. Hijikata's voice was cold and sharp, like the sound of a blade sliding across a wet zone. Son is smart, like you said. But, more than that, he's a swordsman of the Shinsengumi. He is not useless, and he is not replaceable. Hijikata's last words erupted from his mouth in a snarl, and there was no mistaking their meaning. But my arm is. He couldn't even seem to bring himself to finish. No matter how much they might need a swordsman of his skill, Sanen could no longer wield a blade. They both knew his arm would never heal, and Hijikata's desperate defense of his friend had likely only made Sanen feel worse. <laughs> oh dear, that was terribly rude of me. Truly there could be no better news than hearing that your arm is healed. Ito smile fooled no one, and Sanen fell silent. God damn it. He only muttered it under his breath, but I was close enough to hear. Too late, Hijikata had realized his mistake. <sighs> this was the first time I'd seen Hijikata so worked up. He might have been harsh, but he almost always projected an air of control. Perhaps Sanen's injury worried him enough to allow the mask to slip. Uh, uh um, Ito. Kondo was clearly choosing his words carefully, and a very nearly desperate attempt to change the subject. If... if you would care to, perhaps you might come and have a look at our training regimen. Ito's eyes narrowed, and his mouth curled in a small smile. My, how thoughtful of you. Yes, of course. I would love to have a look. Ah, the training room. Air heavy with the sweat of men, straining to better themselves. Truly a delight. The sweat of men. Y yes, I suppose you do have a point. The training room has grown rather musty. <sighs> Ito could be a very peculiar person. Ugh, peculiar isn't the word I use. I'd, he's a jerk. Well, we'll leave this video with that. Let's see if we can get rid of him anytime soon or if he's going to be a big thorn in our side for a long time. Boy, there's really not much to comment on in this video half the time because it's all business right now. I mean, I like the story so far, it's just that I don't have much to say. <laughs> I'm generally not that funny anyway, but when there's nothing to poke fun at. Well, I hope to see you in my future videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye bye everybody.